If you sell items with copyright characters, themes, fonts, or trademarked words on Etsy, the time to remove them is now. Like, right now. For those who are new here, my name is Starla Moore, founder of the Handmade Alpha Academy for Etsy sellers and manager at eRank.com, Etsy's most popular SEO tool. And as an Etsy authority and one of the leading coaches in the industry, if there's a case dealing in copyright infringement, I've heard it at least a dozen times. I've also worked with hundreds of sellers who have both received copyright strikes and who have administered their own strikes, which is why this video will be especially important for both those who have had their work stolen and for those of you who may be stealing work as well. Look, I'm not here to judge, okay? I know that Disney isn't losing money just because Becky here is selling copyright big bow mouse land headbands in her Etsy shop. See what I did there? But regardless of how much money Disney makes, the law is the law, and enforcing the law means enforcing it for both the big guys and the small artisans as well. Which is why in this video, I'll be sharing the breaking news that we have from Etsy, as well as a few myths that you may have been told about copyright. Then we'll finish with the laws that you need to follow in order to safely sell your products online. Keeping in mind that I'm not a lawyer, nor am I qualified to give you legal advice. So if you have questions about anything specifically related to copyright and trademark laws, you may want to head over to a site like JustAnswer.com, where you can pay a few dollars to ask an actual lawyer your specific questions. With disclaimers out of the way, let's get on to why you're here. On April 1st, Etsy introduced registered members with a new reporting system for potential copyright infringement against their brands. Previously, this process had to be filed through an intellectual property infringement report through Etsy. By June 2022, they plan to fully remove the old process of manual reporting, which will make the process of reporting copyright infringement even easier. Good news for brands who want to protect their intellectual property, Bad news for those of you who may be selling things that you shouldn't be selling. With just a few clicks, you can register all of your brands through this all new reporting portal. Not to mention, you'll be able to generate a list of all products listed on Etsy that contain words related to your copyright. And if you can do this for your brand, these brands can do it too. In seconds, big brands will now be able to file reports against shops that infringe on their intellectual property. So if you're a shop that sells things like characters, sports teams, logos, movies, video games, celebrities, musicians, song lyrics, book characters, book quotes, and brand names, and anything else that you didn't personally come up with on your own, you're at high risk of an infringement case. And as I said before, there are a lot of myths out there. The problem is when issues with copyright pop up in the Etsy forums and Etsy community, artisans tend to get defensive over their work, and that's understandable. Disney may own the characters themselves, but you spent the hours creating the beautiful artwork that showcases these characters, and though they were inspired by Disney's characters, the art itself is still yours, right? Well, not exactly. Disney owns the characters. You may have created art of the character, but if you are profiting from the character's likeness, you're infringing on that brand's intellectual property. And the same goes for all of these things here. The moment you decide to sell that art for profit, you're treading on thin ice. The words inspired by will not protect you. Being vague and calling something boy wizard lightning bolt glasses does not exempt you. Purchasing a licensed product, then using that licensed product in your craft does not mean the license carries over to you. Bottom line, if you make an item using something that does not belong to you and does not fall into the public domain, you cannot use it for profit. And just so we're clear, the public domain consists of any creative works where rights may have expired or have been forfeited. Most works entered the public domain 95 years after their publication date, but there are special cases where copyrights have been reinstated, so always be sure to check. For example, the original tale of Alice in Wonderland, as well as its characters, are totally okay to use. However, the characters associated with the 1951 Disney production of Alice in Wonderland are owned by Disney and cannot be used. So what are the general rules that you should know when it comes to copyright? 
First of all, it should be known that Etsy does not have the right to make copyright infringement reports on behalf of another brand. This means that if you receive a report of intellectual property infringement on Etsy, it was reported by the owner of that copyright, not Etsy themselves. This is why you see so many items on Etsy that do violate copyright laws. It's also why it's pointless to cry and complain when items that you've reported to Etsy don't get removed. It's not that Etsy actively allows these items to be listed. They just can't legally act on anything unless the owner of the property comes forward to make that report, which Etsy just made easier than ever. Secondly, there are brands who are easy to license with legally. Sarah J. Moss, one of my favorite authors, actually supports small artists on Etsy by allowing them to apply to be officially licensed shops and create and profit from characters and quotes from her books. There are also brands who are impossible to license with. For example, the NFL requires you to have three years of personal manufacturing experience to secure a minimum of $100,000 to meet the NFL royalty guarantee, to possess an insurance policy worth $3 million per occurrence and $6 million for the whole of your productions. Then you must pre-qualify to become a licensed vendor through their website, which includes an extensive look at your business and financial history, and a full business plan that explains how you'll use their products. And then they perform a full financial audit, which includes two years of your financial statements, tax returns, and annual reports. So unless you can afford better lawyers than these guys, don't pick a fight that you're not likely to win. Lastly, if you receive a copyright claim from something that is 100% your own work, Etsy does allow you to file a counter notice. To do this, send an email to legal at etsy.com that contains links to the affected listings that they disabled, a statement that you have good faith belief that the material was removed or disabled as a result of a mistake, your name, address, telephone number, and email address, and the statement, I consent to the jurisdiction of the federal court for the judicial district in which my address is located. If you live outside of the US, you'll need to revise that statement to, I consent to the jurisdiction of the federal court for the judicial district in which Etsy is located, and I will accept service of process from the person who provided the original notification or an agent of such person. Just be warned. If you file a counter notice and the intellectual property is found to not be your own, you may be liable for damages, so it's usually best to contact a lawyer first. And remember, multiple cases of infringement will result in your shop being shut down. Not to mention, every single case against your shop can result in damage to your overall customer and marketplace experience score, which will forever impact the success and search ranking of your shop. All in all, Etsy is a marketplace for creativity and originality. So create something wonderful, original, and legal if you want to build a profitable, respectable, and sustainable brand on Etsy. And if you feel like you need some help along the way, my own Handmade Alpha Academy will be opening on June 14th for enrollment. The Handmade Alpha Academy is my nine module training program that teaches sellers how to build dominant brands on Etsy step by step. We have over 800 successful students, many of whom now run their Etsy businesses full time. If this sounds like something that you might be interested in checking out for your own business, I've added a link up here somewhere and down below where you can check out more about the program, our success stories, and the class curriculum. Overall, success on Etsy comes from planning and building a meaningful brand with realistic goals. With a little science, a lot of data, and help from a trusted Etsy expert, you'll be well on your way to Etsy success. Cue the funky lo-fi beat.